Hello and welcome to another election watch analysis video. Today we will be doing a 2024 election prediction between governors Andrew Cuomo and Ron DeSantis. These two governors share some interesting similarities as both of them have had their approval ratings fall in the recently due to scandals. For example, Andrew Cuomo uh, having an investigation come to the conclusion that he did sexually harass several women and Ron DeSantis uh, having his approval ratings slip because of his COVID-19 shortcomings. Well, either way, I think it'd be pretty interesting to put these two candidates up against each other in a 2024 presidential election prediction. So let's get started. I think I'll start with Ron DeSantis' safe states, so of course much of the Midwest would all be safe. Wyoming would not be likely, and uh, North Dakota and South Dakota would be safe, along with most of Nebraska. Of course, the South would also be safe. Much of the traditional Republican strongholds would go for DeSantis by a safe margin. I think a few likely states in 2020 will shift back to their safe margins, like South Carolina and Alaska, which as you can see here, were likely. But anyway, I believe that since uh, Andrew Cuomo's scandals are definitely, in my uh, opinion, of course, worse than Ron DeSantis's, and a lot of voters would take that more into account and forgive Ron DeSantis for his shortcomings with COVID-19. But anyway, now Ron DeSantis has 125 electoral votes. Andrew Cuomo, of course, we'll see soon. I think much of the Pacific Coast would be safe for Andrew Cuomo. Hawaii, of course, would be safe. And D.C., Maryland, Massachusetts, Vermont, New York is home state, which could maybe be a little closer than usual just because he's very unpopular there, but because of partisanship, he'd win it nonetheless. Maine's first district would be safe, and I think Rhode Island would just be around 15%, since a lot of ancestral Democrats would move away from Andrew Cuomo and instead vote for Ron DeSantis. Anyway, now we have Andrew Cuomo at 149 safe electoral votes. And for Ron DeSantis' likely states, Iowa, Ohio, Maine Second District, uh, not Maine at Large, my bad, uh, Maine Second District will be safe for Ron DeSantis, Texas, all these were likely states in 2020, and I think Florida would just barely be at that point. While Ron DeSantis is pretty unpopular there now, it's only a net 5% disapproval, which will likely rebound by 2024. So I think Ron DeSantis would win it by a likely margin. Anyway, for Andrew Cuomo, Oregon, Colorado, and Virginia, these would, Colorado and Virginia would be pretty close, similar to Florida. Uh, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Delaware would also be likely. And now we have the lean states. So there will be some interesting lean states for sure. I think North Carolina would be lean. Um, Nebraska's second district, as it is a moderate district, in which uh, Andrew Cuomo's scandals would definitely uh, overpower their democratic-leaning nature, and, allow, and have many moderate voters go for Ron DeSantis. I'm also debating putting states like Wisconsin as lean, since Andrew Cuomo would not have the same working class or suburban support, and that would be enough to shift it in just over 1.5%. It would be very narrow, and potentially in the tilt margin as well. Anyway, I think that that will be all for Ron DeSantis' lean states, and for Andrew Cuomo, Minnesota would be lean, Actually, no. Minnesota would just be around 1.5%. So actually, yeah, lean in just over the tilt margin. Maine at large would also be lean. Same thing with New Mexico, and that will be all. So to go over these calls, uh, I think that Maine at large would simply be as it was back in 2016, around 3%. That would be pretty reasonable as Andrew Cuomo's margin would be reduced in Maine's 1st District. And Ron DeSantis' uh, margin in Maine's 2nd District would be similar to Donald Trump's back then. Anyway, uh, Minnesota, I think the suburbs would abandon the Democratic Party and Andrew Cuomo and go for Ron DeSantis, while the rurals would continue to shift to the right, and that would make it around 1.52%. So now we get into the final tilt states. About 71 electoral votes are up for grabs, and Ron DeSantis has a current lead about 246 electoral votes compared to Andrew Cuomo's 221. So I'll start off with the tilt states. So after, those are the ones left, of course. And I'll start off going from west to east. I think Nevada would very narrowly go to Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis has very good support amongst uh, suburban voters who would leave Andrew Cuomo for Ron DeSantis, since DeSantis is pretty moderate and could definitely appeal to those voters. But DeSantis would also make gains with Hispanics in Las Vegas and just enough to narrowly win Nevada. And it'd be quite narrow, believe me, not by a large margin or anything like that. Arizona would be a larger margin, though, but I think in the end, DeSantis would win it. I think Arizona would actually be lean. I'm going to change that characterization now because Maricopa County, which is one of the biggest counties in the state, 
and home of Phoenix and many of the suburbs that helped give Joe Biden the win back in 2020 would shift by a very large margin to Ron DeSantis, again because of Andrew Cuomo's scandals. Let's head to Michigan next. I think that will be tilt. Similar victory to Trump's 2016 win for Ron DeSantis. He'd win back many of the affluent white voters who would not be willing to vote for Ron DeSantis or for Andrew Cuomo. And that would actually put him over the top, giving him 270 electoral votes. So in this scenario, Ron DeSantis will be elected president of the United States. Meanwhile, Georgia would also be tilt uh, for many of the same reasons. Cuomo scandals, the suburban voters going to DeSantis, not much to talk about there. Pennsylvania would be about 1%. I think it will be um, closer than Wisconsin, but by a bigger margin than Michigan. And the final state up for grabs is New Hampshire. New Hampshire is quite interesting. I think it will be as close as it was in 2016, which was around 0.3% for Hillary Clinton. Andrew Cuomo would definitely have his Northeastern appeal, if that would factor in at all. But uh, Ron DeSantis could definitely improve with the moderate voters who do not approve of Andrew Cuomo very much and would vote for someone like Chris Sununu. In the end, I think I'm going to give this state quite narrowly to Ron DeSantis. He went by about 0.5% at the max. But here's the final map. Uh, 221 electoral votes for Andrew Cuomo and 317 for Ron DeSantis. This is definitely one of the more best-case scenarios for the Republican Party, but I think it's entirely within the range of possibility. If you like this video, please leave a like. It would really help with the channel and help more people on YouTube see this. If you enjoyed this type of content, subscribe for more, and also you can check out my channel on the uh, left so you can see more of my videos. On the right, you will see a, ch a video custom tailored to inches provided by YouTube, and you can leave a comment telling me what your prediction would be. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.